Hey guys, testing one, two, three. Testing, testing one, two, three. Let me know if you can hear me. Testing one, two, three. So I don't know how many of you are on. And uh, yeah, we'll just wait for people to get on. Give me a thumbs up if you can hear me. Let me know. And it was a bit of a lag all the time. Also, let me know if the sound is synced with my voice or not. Uh, does that make any sense? Make sure my voice is synced with the mouth here. Uh, let's uh, talk to the delay. Whoa, is that better? Okay. All right, guys. I hope everything is well. Welcome to the stream. It's been a while. I've been traveling. So I'll turn this down a little bit. So I assume you people are getting, hello, hello, can you guys hear me? Let me know if you can hear me. Cheers. Hey, hey how are you? Good, good, good. My apologies for being MIA for a little while. I have been uh, traveling and so it was a bit difficult. Yeah, hope everything is good. Thumbs up, thumbs up, yo, yo, yo. So let me know, guys, if you can hear me. Hey Anissa, how are ya? Yeah, sound is cool. All right, good, good, good. Hey Kevin, how are ya? How's everybody doing? Yo, yo, hey, how are ya? Everybody's new faces and some of the old faces. That's cool. Thanks for being Hello Kevin, how are ya? Glad you made it say that. I appreciate that. Thank you. It was a good trip. I enjoyed it. The only problem I had is I ate a little bit too much in Texas. Too much Texas barbecue. I have to uh, I have to start fasting again to get that weight down. So let me uh, just jump into the subject at hand so that people who are watching the replay, they don't have to. And then we'll do the Q&A after, as usual. So I assume that the sound is good and the voice and the mic, the audio and the uh, lips are all synced up. All right, so somebody sent me a question. So somebody had been doing my... Um, lizard komodo training here and if you've done if you haven't done that check it out it's my lizard wizard komodo it's free just sign up below join and next thing you know you'll start learning komodo lessons yes uh texas barbecue is really amazing actually first time i've had it and i was pretty impressed let me tell you so i got a question from somebody who had just completed uh komodo uh, links below again, it's free. Um, Komodo is my psycholo psychological training uh, mini program, if you will. It's kind of cool. It's delivered to you via email. You get a new task. It helps to train your brain. Anyway, somebody asked me, was wondering if you read the book The Millionaire Fast Lane by DeMarco. Never heard of it. It talks about the older generation boomer mentality is not the best, i.e. being in a job for 40 years, investing money into the stock market for long term. It is true that you will be rich by 65, 70 with this approach, but then it's too late. There's no guarantee to be alive at that age. All right. So let me first comment on that. Um, yeah, life is uh, there's no guarantees. I have friends. Many of my friends are still alive and I've had friends who've died quite young. A cancer, a car accident. So uh, when you're evaluating everything that you do in life, don't worry, I'm going to get into code soon. When you're evaluating everything, you got to kind of, you got to, uh, you got to consider long term, but you also have to consider now because you never know when, uh, you know, when your last day is. So it's kind of a balance to be had. But I'm going to give you a strategy that's kind of cool, in fact, something I implemented. Anyhow, so he makes a good point about that. Um, yeah, a lot of people die young, but you don't want to just, you don't, you know, I've had some friends who figured they were going to die young, so they never invested in themselves and properly invested and do some of the things I'm going to teach you now. And now they're quite much older and they're still alive. They're like, Eesh, they're in a bad situation. So you got to try to find um, a balance there. I appreciate the thumbs up, guys, if you uh, give them. All right, so let's go in there. So he says, this author, uh, DeMarco, he says, he talks about the fast lane in that book and that people who follow the fast lane approach who are not famous or pro athletes, etc., can generate millions in the space of a 10-year window through business. This is true. 
this is true. As you went down the entrepreneurial route from an early age and you are successful, did you have any early knowledge of this fast lane? Um, so just a little background. I started my first business when around 18 years old. Uh, my last job I had working for somebody as an employee, I was a bouncer in a nightclub, a place called Metropolis up in Montreal. And well, actually I did other clubs afterwards, but mostly Metropolis. Anyhow, um, when I went into business, it was kind of something I fell into. I had not intentionally, I didn't have a desire to become a business person, but then my hobby grew into a business and it was a weird business. I used to import rare fish from South America and Africa and Asia. And we used to supply rare fish, not for eating, but for, for aquariums and public zoos and so on. And then we had water purification products that we, we soft manufactured. And, and then we, we, we import and distribute uh, frozen food and brine shrimp, all that kind of weird stuff. It's a weird business. But I learned a lot about businesses in that. The main thing about getting into business is you have to really enjoy it. You know, it's a cliche, but trust me, why do you have to enjoy it? Because when you hit those hard times, which is normal in business, uh, you're going to better enjoy what you're doing because you're just going to give up. So, yeah, how does this translate into coding? Well, I'll tell you. There's many different ways in where um, you can use code to fast track your way to financial independence. I'll give you a couple of tips in, in about two seconds. So let me just finish off this guy's video. I am pleased to be in your mentoring program as you are successful. It seems you have adopted a fascinating approach. Yeah, I did. My only question is, if you have passive income from quite a few businesses, why do you take the freelance? Why do you take on freelance work as well as software development? Or is this a, an additional? Or excuse me, is this just an additional passion? So I don't take on software work for other people, and I don't do uh, freelance work. No, 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 no. My in terms of coding and code related stuff, I'm in, I'm in education and the mentoring. I enjoy that mentoring program I launched about a year and a half ago. We've got a lot of people joining every day now. It's kind of cool. Um, so I'm fortunate enough to be in a position where I can do what I want. For me, uh, the most important thing for me was freedom. Uh, it was freedom uh, in terms of personal choice. That's why I decided to continue with coding. So what happened, in uh, 94, I built, I believe it was 94, I built my first website for my business with no intention of being a decoder, but I just learned to code because there wasn't such a thing as web editors and so on. Uh, then from then, after a couple years, I sold out of my position in the business. So it's like 94, 95, 96, I started going full time as a coder. And I was freelancing. Uh, I wasn't, you know, I had to entertain a couple of job opportunities because uh, there were a lot of jobs back then if you do had a code as there is today. But I decided just to stick to the freelance and to start building things up. Wow, it gave me a runtime, uh, a runway rather, to be able to explore other business opportunities for myself. So we just get to the lesson. So number one, if you want to find yourself financially independent, coding is a great way because it's the quickest way to earning a lot of money. Unlike so many other professions, you can make double, triple the average local salary. So let's say in your part of the world, the average salary is 50000 a year. In coding, it's reasonable to be able to hit 100, 150 within the first uh, two to four years, depending on your skills. Now, the key to getting a high paying coding job is you want to get your foot into the door as a coder as quickly as possible. When you get your foot into the door, then you gain that experience. You get, mm, and you may start out here with your salary, but quickly enough, you're going to go whoosh, quite fast. So the strategy that I teach people to use to become financially independent is, um, is to basically, when you start making all that extra money as a coder developer, not to go crazy and start buying yourself Audis and BMWs and eating out at $100 a night meals. What you want to do is you want to get a head start in terms of investment. So instead of, I've given this formula before and I'll just give it very brief. Essentially, they say if you want to retire at 65 comfortably, you put 10 or 15%, depending on who you talk to, 10 to 15% of your uh, earnings into investments, uh, ETFs, 
And then next thing you know, at 65, you got you got a lot of money. Depending, the earlier you start, the better. Um, I have a different approach. I say, and this is what I did, you know, you, uh, you find yourself making all this extra money, invest all that extra money. So let's say you're normally, you're normal before you're coding or now that you're learning, you're not making much money and then you start making a lot of coding money. Don't increase your lifestyle right away. You know, invest all that extra money. So instead of investing 10% per year, which is going to take you to 65 to retire, why not invest 50% if you can do it or 60% or 70% per year? You don't have to do it for long. So think about it. Let's say you double your money or more as a coder. You got that job. So instead of saving 10% of your salary like everybody else, don't be a doofus. Add all that extra money, save it. I'm giving you rough numbers because taxations and all this kind of stuff will affect this, but you'll get the principle. So you make that extra 50%, take that 50% and invest that. So instead of one, instead of five years to get to 50% of your salary saved, you do it in one year. So instead of five years like everybody else, you do it in one year. You do two years of that, you've done 10 years of saving versus uh, in, in two years as opposed to you know, having to take 10 years. So already you're way ahead. If you do three years where you just keep your lifestyle modest and you keep investing like crazy, all that extra money, and all of a sudden in three years, you've done 15 years of saving. You see where I'm going with this, right? So without having to hit a home run and to be a unicorn, like my good friend Rob, who's, his company is worth $1.5 billion now, you can just uh, tighten the belt, be a little cheap for a few years, and then build up that, uh, your savings quite quickly. And you'll be way ahead of the game, so you'll be able to retire quite early. So you can do that. And if you do that for you know five, six, seven years, then you'll be way ahead. So that's the basic strategy. There's more to it than that. But that's my answer to that. So for me, uh, so you know uh, my background, I went into code. One of the reasons I went into code and I designed my business the way it is and the way it was is that I had a, a blood disease when I was quite young. 19 years old I almost died and then this lingered for like a year year and a half and then for for a few years afterwards I had tremendous fatigue chronic problems like I, some day some days I just couldn't get up three four days I just couldn't get up too tired or I, I would crawl to get my uh, my frosted flakes eat my food and crawl back to bed that was the situation so I needed a career that allowed me to work in spikes. So if I needed to take a week off, I could take a week off. If I needed to work, so that started with freelancing, right? Freelancing gives you that flexibility in terms of schedule. As a freelancer, you get to work when you want, how you want, with whom you want. You work at home, right? So that was the first level. The next level was to create SaaS products. I had a dating site. I had people paying me to access my dating site. I've done that story before. Um, and then eventually I started doing courseware and right now I have Studio Web, which is used by schools all over North America and different parts of the world. And that allows me that flexibility in terms of time. Now, over the years, I've invested a little here and invested here, try here and here. So, you know, it's all pretty cool at this point. So there's the basic strategy where you can fast track your retirement without having to be uh, a super successful business person. You can just be a normal coder who's making the coder money and just a little bit of smart, a little patience, you know, speed up your investment, you know, cycle by 10, 15, 20 years by just not going crazy with your spending initially. And uh, Bob's your uncle. You'll be in a good position. You'll be fast tracking yourself. So there you go. That's the story. All right. So thanks everybody for joining the stream. Um, please give me a thumbs up. Now I'm going to do some Q&A with you guys in about two seconds. So I'm going to revive something I used to always do. So first of all, if you're a total noob and you're interested in reading, I'm going to recommend my book. Now, I wrote this book 800 years ago, but it's still relevant today. Um, it's got all kinds of pictures. I wrote it to be evergreen. So I cover HTML, CSS, JavaScript, touch of JavaScript, really, just a touch. And it's all relevant today because I was smart about what was going to be in this book, everything in this book, it, everything I teach in this book is still used today. So if you're a total beginner and you want a, a gentle you know, way to get into code and you prefer books, this, this is my book. So you can check it out on Amazon. Links below. 
my interactive training though is much more comprehensive and it's newer so you know you can decide on that so if you are an experienced developer let's say you've written a few things you understand javascript or python or whatever and you want to up your coding skills to the next level uh, then you want to check out my uh, refactoring it's not my book this refactoring book this is a guy by martin fowler this is one of the few books that I've kept from the uh, early 2000s, 1990s. He wrote the first edition, 99. This is a book on something called refactoring. Refactoring is the process of cleaning up your code. Uh, there are set ways of doing things, and it helps you by going through this book, and the link is below. This one is for Java. They have one for JavaScript, but it's applicable to any language. Refactoring is a, just a process. This will up your skills as a coder big time. Bigly, very important. So this is the other book I would recommend if you already know how to code and you want to raise your game. Instead of learning a new library or something, learn to refactor. And to blow your minds, if you want to learn a little bit about uh, your perception of reality and existence, now you can check out my Lizard Wizard course below, but one of the inspirations of this course is this book here. This to me is one of the most important books ever written. It's called The Naked Ape. So check it out, link below. This is a book, I think it was written in the 60s. So these two zo zoologists, see, it's my book. You see how old they are? Yellow pages, right? I bought this book when I was in high school. So that's like 100 years ago. This was the, um, it was first published in 69. This is the 1970 edition. <laughs> so I bought this secondhand, of course. But uh, I bought it back in high school. This is going to change your thinking about everything. It's pretty cool stuff. Naked Ape, I recommend that you read this book. You can probably get it on Amazon for 50 cents. So uh, highly recommend. Uh, yeah, so there are my book mentions. Somebody, what's the other thing I always get asked about? They always ask me, well, Steph, what computer should I use to code in? Any computer is fine. Windows, Linux, Mac, doesn't matter. I typically recommend laptops because you have the flexibility to move around and you don't really need too much power in terms of being a coder. I would have an SSD based system, so a solid state drive, and I would have at least eight gig of RAM, 16 to be safe. Of course, it depends on the system. Now I use, this is the MacBook Air M1. This is the new M1 chip, but you can use Windows if you want. I like it because it's super thin, super fast. This is great for traveling. So. There's my laptop recommendation. But again, Windows, Linux, it's all good. It's all good. All uh, right. So let's do some Q&A. All right, I'm going to scroll to the top. How many are we? 136, not bad. Oh, by the way, yeah, so if you look below, I have a Discord channel. So the, 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 the boys and the girls on Discord asked me to uh, let you know about If you go below this video, you'll see a link to the Discord channel. You should join that right away. I'm going to check that, see if anybody's joining. Yeah, join the Discord channel. Uh, where is it? Uh, welcome. Yeah, so there we go. Okay, we have people, some people joining. Yeah, people just joined. Four people just joined. So, yeah, I invite you to join the Discord channel. Uh, good group on there. All kinds of discussions. We'll see what happens. Uh, how many people on there now? We have hundreds of people on there now. I think we have over 1,500 members in there. So you should check that out. Again, Discord channel below. Um, yeah, let's answer some questions. Let's see what we got here. Uh, become a millionaire as Android and Flutter app developers as possible. Yes, whatever type of development that you do, if you follow my principles, 100%. Morning. Yes, Anissa the Queen says, they say Texas barbecue is great. Yeah, but Texas, Texas barbecue is actually quite good. It was the best I've ever had. I'm good. I hope everything is good with you. Hello, hello. Thanks for the thumbs, everybody. Appreciate it. I'll try to answer as many questions as possible. Hi, I recently enrolled in your coding program. I'm really enjoying it so far. I'm currently on HTML5. It's help, been helping me a ton. Thanks. Hey, cool. I'm glad it was useful, JJ. Good stuff. Uh, ancient coder vibes. Yes. That's the official channel salute. Boom. So I got a new super wide angle lens so I can do the double guns. I got lots of space now. It's kind of cool. Uh, all right, JC. 
Uh, hi, what influenced your decision to change the amount of your money you hold uh, from two years to only six months? Ah, I think um, came to the fact that I've never had to use my FU money, first of all. And I had a lot of FU money sitting, uh, excessive amounts of cash sitting in cash. And with inflation, uh, that value, that money is losing value all the time. So I thought, you know what? Given the stability of my, I have several income flows. Um, as your income is, uh, as you get more sources of income, the need for FU money diminishes, right? Uh, because you just have more, you have different sources. You have only one source of income, um, you're vulnerable, right? You only have one source. So maybe you have a little bit more FU money in that situation. But since I have many streams now and I have significant uh, investments, my need for FU money is really quite minimal. Um, so I would reduce it. For the average person, if you have like a steady freelance business or a steady job and you're making money, everything's cool. You've got, let's say you, you've got your first job and you've gotten through the, uh, the trial period and, you know, then, you know, you've been there a couple of years, you're probably safe. So maybe you can bump it down to six months, you know, as opposed to two years. I was just overly cautious, I think, perhaps, um, because uh, some early experiences way back in the day. So that's why. So... The amount of FU money you have is contingent on how stable your income is um, and uh, how many income streams that you have. If you have multiple streams, then you need less uh, FU. And if you have a very stable income in terms of a job or something, or maybe you've got a freelance career and you have many clients now, that would be many streams, then you can uh, have less FU money. All right. Good question. Best language to learning programming is C or Python. Python is going to be the easiest to approach. Then you can get into C. What do you think about open source? Which company should I focus on, big or small? Um, open source is cool. We all are very uh, reliant on open source, right? Many, 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 many uh, frameworks and libraries are open source that we rely upon. So that's cool. Uh, which company should focus on, big or small? That depends on the type of culture that you want to work in. I assume that means whether you want to work for a big or small. Uh, big companies meaning mean bigger bureaucracies means your job is going to be more focused. Uh, smaller companies, less bureaucracy, more flexibility into your work, uh, but maybe a little less stable. So it's, a, it's really a personal choice. Sam, is there a technology stack where you would be able to design a web app without doing HTML? Just JS and CSS in the front end. I don't think so. I think uh, HTML is the basic built-in block. Uh, there's no, I think, uh, I'm not aware of any. I'm trying to think of. So glad I'm awake at 2:30 a.m. trying to solve an algo problem, and in the minute I felt desperate, your live streams notification appeared. Karma, greetings from Bulgaria. Hey, glad I can help. Hey, listen, if the if you're not getting the, the the algo problem, if you're not able to solve it now, it's sometimes you just sleep on it in the next day and oftentimes you get the answer. So don't let it frustrate you. <laughs> hey, when to use REST API and when to use GraphQL? Uh, Whoa. Hmm. Uh, I don't have a direct answer. It really depends on circumstances. It's uh... hello, Stefan. Uh, I, I a personal question. I'm living in Sudan. I am a front end developer. I need a remote jobs entry level, but can't find one. Put up a very nice website. Uh, make sure your written and communication skills in the target country are really, really good. Uh, maybe get up there on Upwork and try to make connections or some site like that and try to make connections with companies uh, in remote countries. The most important thing is that you have very good language skills, very good communication skills, and that will really help you there. Yay. Hey, Steph, I'm doing your HTML5 course uh, right now. I completed a Python course. After I'm done with the HTML5 course, what will be the best course to take towards coding career? CSS3, take my CSS3 Pro course. That's the next logical step. All right. 
Thanks for the thumbs, everybody. Uh, having five years experience in Java, what do you suggest for promoting from Java Dev to Tech Lead? Any books you would recommend? Any suggested advice, tips? Thank you, Stefan. Yeah, become, as I said, become good at refactoring. Also, you want to get into something called design patterns. Design patterns are very important. Uh, so refactoring design patterns, there are links below on those two subjects. You want to improve your communication skills. Uh, when you become a tech lead, it means you are able to communicate with people well. So you want to be a better communicator. That means understanding your brain and other people's brain, how they operate. And I invite you to take a look at my Lizard Wizard course down below and do the Komodo training, which is free. The Komodo training is free. All right. Uh, I landed an internship at Twitch. Hey, congratulations, dude. Good job, Ganface. Very nice. Could a beginner coder make great money as an independent contractor, for lack of a better word? Yeah, you can. It that has to do with when you talk about independent contractor, we're talking well, there's contractor and then there's freelancer. Contractor a little bit more difficult because there's an assumption if you what's the difference first of all? Freelancer manage owns the projects in the sense where you will work for a company, they will say, We want this website built, and you will say, Okay, we're gonna build it like this, like this, like this. And they're going to say yes or no. You give them a price and then you go work on your own time. You set the schedule. You decide what to do. You know, of course, the client has to agree, but you have a lot more control of the whole thing. Whereas your contractor, it might mean you might be hired just to like I was I did a little bit of contract work in the 90s where I was working for a large telco up in Canada. And my job was to build out the help system. That's it. That's all I did was the help system. And I had to go into work every day. And I had to, you know, at the times they said, and I had to do that help system and everything was laid out for me. I was, I was contracted to do just that and that only. Whereas freelancer, uh, it's much more flexible. So that said, um, how do you make great money is about, uh, freelancing is about managing your workflows so that you can mass maximize your output versus your time. You do that, uh, with, with skills using utilizing frameworks having good workflows and just good negotiating with clients i uh, check out my um, freelance course it talks all about that best advice to give an intern um ask questions but don't ask too many questions um work extra right now you're you're earning your stripes if you will you have to uh you know don't be afraid to work a little extra hard. And uh, yeah, just, just be friendly too. Uh, congratulations. Yeah, for sure. Congratulations. Freelance is the word I was looking for. Yeah, that's it. So we got that. We got that for you. Everybody, congrats to Ganface. Good job. We got a Twitch intern in the house. Nice. Good stuff. Uh Hey, hey, mate, I'm breezing through your JS Foundations course. Hey, very cool. I'm glad you like it. Good stuff, good stuff. Anissa is the queen. Yes, I appreciate that. I appreciate the thumbs up, guys and girls, because it helps with the Google algorithms. Google sees a lot of thumbs, a lot of comments. Google says, hey, this is a pretty good stream. Uh, what else? Uh, Ahmed. Sadala, how long it takes to start having income from coding when you just start? Depends on you. I've seen people do it within three months. Other people take longer. It's a combination of having uh, good coding skills, but also good communication skills, good job getting skills. Uh, don't ever try not to get frustrated or, or disappointed. Just do a little bit every day, a little bit every day. Take some time off too once in a while, you know, and you'll get there. Uh, what's the difference between nerd and doofus? <laughs> um, a nerd uh, is smart and a doofus is not. Well, no, doofus can be smart too. A doofus is a, cl uh, a klutz. 
somebody who's not physically capable. Uh, there you go. But uh, whatever. Can I buy self-teaching software to learn how to code? Uh, self-teaching software. Self-teaching software. You mean software will walk you through? I don't know. But, you know, learn the basics. You're going to have to anyway. And then you get a nice code editor like VS Code where it does code completion. So it kind of helps you to learn. What a reason to get a... Uh, an IDE, an integrated development environment, or a code editor like VS Code, one of the reasons is because um, it does code completion. And when it does code completion, it's going to start teaching you about the language a bit more. Uh, hey, how are you, man? Hey, Seth, let's hang. My place or yours? <laughs> how you doing, man? You're back in town. Yeah, I think you are, huh? How long C++ will still be kind of cool? C++, C++, excuse me, will not go anywhere for a while, that's for sure. C++ is uh, quite widely used, very popular. Uh, what do you think of companies who train you and then place you in another company with a with two-year commitment at 50K a year? Is that a good deal? Guaranteed placement, but with two years fixed income. Well, that's how they make their money. Because uh, if you know, by the end of the, if assuming the market is relative, so if they're only paying you 50k the second year, you might be making normally 20, 75, or 80, or 100k. That's why. So they're making a lot of money. Depends, you know. That that's a difficult choice. Depends how much support you need there. Uh, I'm breezing through your JS Foundation course. Do you have an advanced version? I am coming out with an update to it, but you're going to get into DOM scripting in there, DOM walking, as I like to call it. You're going to get into um, animation. Uh, so there's, you're getting into a lot of stuff in there. You learn how to uh, manipulate the DOM in, in advanced ways. So um, from there, I'm... Like I said, I'm, I'm probably going to come out with a pro course at some point soon, but it's just an add-on to it. Um, you should be good. Next thing I would do if you, uh, after you finish my JS course, jump into my uh, Python course. It will help you. Once you learn Python, your JavaScript will get better. I heard the phrase today, freedom from retirement. Yeah, that's a good concept, actually. I never believed in the concept of retirement, per se. I rather do what I like during my life so that I don't have to retire away from it. Um, it, didn't, it didn't make sense to me to work uh, for decades so that you can do what you want. You know, I think that you should try a little bit harder to try to find work that is fun for you. So then it's not going to work. And then retirement becomes a non-issue. Helmet Chill, I appreciate the content. No problem. Thanks for joining the stream. Hey, Eva, how are you? First time to catch a live stream. Welcome to the stream. For people live to the stream, I ripped off Star Trek. I took the Vulcan uh, Live Long and Prosper. And I now say now Code Long and Prosper. Uh, I have another one too. Anyway, so this is the single gun I call it. If you're a nerd, you can do this. See, it's like instant. If you're a master nerd, you can do both hands at the same time. That takes skill. Uh, do you do coaching calls? I do with my mentoring program. Links below. Check out my mentoring program. It's getting pretty good, that, that mentoring program. You should check it out. If you're interested in Uncle Steph Prime Prime Uncle Steph training. Check it below. I got my mentoring program. Uh, 800 years. Yeah, exactly. Very nice. Very nice. Hey, how are you? Yeah, sorry, guys. I've been uh, I've been incognito vis-a-vis -vis the uh, live streams. I've been traveling. And then when I got back from my travels about a week and a half ago, I guess it is, I've uh, been super busy. Uh, so, But I plan on doing these on a regular basis. I like doing the, the streams. How are we doing here? 30 minutes. Okay, not so bad. Hi, Savan. Outside of getting a job, do you think there are ways to make money as an iOS developer, e.g. freelancing, creating all apps, blogging? Or is it really viable, or is it, or is it only really viable to work for a company? Um, no, all possible. 
Um, creating your own apps is the most difficult of it because there's so many apps out there and for your app to get traction is, is difficult, but it's doable. Freelancing might be the way or, you know, would be better, but maybe that's where contracting comes in where you might be able to get quick contracts, which type of freelancing, I suppose. You know, when you're freelancing, the web is the king, right? You know that, the web is the king, but there's, there's possibilities there. There's no question about it. I'm working in C Sharp for the time, just another tool for my tool books. Yeah, that's it, exactly. That's how you got to look at it. So he's learning, Andreas is learning C Sharp just to add to his toolbox. But at the same time, you'll find when you learn your second and your third and your fourth programming language, your abilities as a coder overall will just improve quite a bit. So as I was saying before, after you finish my JavaScript course, jump to my Python course. By doing Python, you're going to get a deeper understanding of JavaScript. It's like uh, driving different types of cars. If you drive an Audi, then you go to BMW, you go to Porsche, you drive to different cars and you feel their, you know, how they feel, or you go convertible or Cooper, whatever it is, um, you become a better driver because you'll felt all these different types of vehicles. Yeah. Let's go, man. Uh, I appreciate that. Thanks, thanks. Yeah, yeah. Are your classes at your own speed or is it a certain pace? Uh, the mentoring program is designed with a self-paced model, meaning you work at your own pace. Why? Because everybody has different schedules. So some people do an hour a day. Some people half an hour a day. Some people do three, four hours a day. As I tell people, whether it takes you a month to finish JavaScript or two months, doesn't matter. It doesn't affect you or the program. All that matters is that you complete it so that you have the skills. That's all. So good question. No pace. Hey, hey. <laughs> You're great at keeping up books. What is your view on coding cryptocurrency and blockchain? It's niche, meaning it's specialized. Uh, I would be searching around, see what the job opportunities for are before investing in that. But it's cool. So we got here. Hi, Uncle Stefan. Love creating web apps and love working with React. Cool. I am also looking at freelancing. Can you please explain stacks and back-end process? Well, you should just do a full stack course. Links below. Um, if you do full stack, you have more opportunity. That's all. Why? Because most small business uh, will not use React. They'll be using all kinds of different web stack based stuff, you know, full stack. And that's not dissing on React. It's just a lot of com small companies won't be using it. Yeah. Cross platform GUI. Well, web. Web, of course. Responsive web. I like two screens for one. I like two screens, one. Uh, Excuse me. I like two screens, one for code and the other for testing. Yeah, of course. Mm -hmm. I bought your web design book. One class I did not take at university. Your book is great. It's helping me to learn what it's all about. Thank you. Ah, great. I'm glad you like it. Yeah, it's uh, just in case you're wondering. I wrote this book a while back, but it's still 100% good today. Um, it's basics, total basics. Um, there's actually a secret, there's a secret story in here, but uh, if I told you what it was, it wouldn't be a secret anymore. Uh, what is your view on no-code designers, their place in website app design space and process? They have, a, they have a place for sure. Could be good for prototyping. Uh, no-code platforms could be good or low-code could be good for um, building uh, apps uh, in a quick way. Uh, they are not competition. They're just tools that you can leverage. Uh, so I wouldn't take them as a threat. Uh, yeah, thanks for the thumbs, everybody. Uh, will AI make coders obsolete eventually? I, before AI makes coders obsolete, it will make just about every other profession obsolete. So you're going to have... Well, in advance, you have major warning. Right now, AI can't even drive a car uh, fairly well. So I wouldn't be too worried about AI. Oh, by the way, 
people new to the channel, there is a Discord link right below. You should join the Discord. Uh, how many people are there? We've had a bunch of people join. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. It's like eight, nine people join. So you should join. I invite you to join the Discord. Link is below, right at the top under the video. Uh, we've got a pretty good group in there. Uh, what else is there? What is F U monkey? No, money, money, F U money. F U money is F U money. Do a search on my channel for F U money. I got two videos on that, explains it all. It's emergency money. And there's a philosophy behind it. So, so will C be forgotten soon? No chance. Is Flutter the future of mobile development? Probably not. I still, th I think it could be around for a while, but I don't, I don't think it's, you know, I'm, and I like Flutter, but I don't think it's going to be taking over anything soon. Tried joining Discord, but can't get ca past the captcha. Yeah. I don't know. Uh, uh, yeah, pretty much. That's the one way. F U money is basically emergency money, enough to cover uh, at least six months of of of, uh, of all the cash that you need to pay. You know, pay your rent, your mortgage, whatever, all your all your bills. So you calculate how much you spend every month. You budget that. I don't know, whatever it's two thousand a month. So you should have at least six months, twelve thousand. This way, you can sleep at night because you know you don't have to worry about getting the next paycheck. I used to advocate up to two years. Eh, if you're not too sure about your income, maybe have a year. If once you're solid with your income, then you can drop it down maybe to six months. It just allows you to sleep well at night. It's just it's just emergency cash. Very important if you're freelancing, especially. Buy from Chrome Linux. All right. Uh, okay, I think I got those freelance. Uh, hmm. Hey, Carl, how are ya? Uh, first time making it to your live stream. I have a question on how a programmer use a documentation like the MBM web docs. Yeah, you just got to get familiar with them. That's all. So you got to know your foundations. And once you do, um, and you, you know, you for example, you check out MDM, you got to get familiar with MDM you know, where everything's placed, and then you'll start using them all the time. There's no question about that. Uh, hold on. Hey, Google, set the living room temperature to 23 degrees. All right, it's getting a little cold in here. The living room is currently set to eco mode. To change the temperature, you'll need to switch it to a different mode. Google's not compliant. Uh, how many months has the day... Has a day when a week is monthly, monthly per day. How many months has a day when a week is a monthly per day? I had, I don't understand that question. <laughs> uh, is there a reference you recommend for pre-made elements such as navs, buttons, grids, with only HTML, CSS only, without having to learn new syntax? Well, you don't. With Bootstrap, you're not learning a new syntax. You're learning a library because Bootstrap is this JavaScript, HTML, CSS. Um, actually, it's mostly HTML, CSS. Um, well, actually, maybe I haven't looked at Bootstrap 5. No, it's going to be HTML, CSS. I don't know. You can use templates. You can use templates. There's other libraries as well. WebAssembly might be a way to avoid HTML, but it would be weird to do this. Yeah, I haven't looked at WebAssembly, so that's a good point. Yeah, there are, you know what, you just, thank you, David. Yes, you are. There are uh, libraries that would generate HTML for you in your HTML and CSS. Uh, WebAssembly could be it. I have not looked at it. And there, there are others, but they never really catch on uh, from what I've seen in the past anyway. So... Uh, Love your channel. I always provide insights into the future code of guidance prices. Ah, great. Glad I could help, Andy. Thanks for joining the stream. Cheers. Uh, see, if you go into a job interview and you go like this, you're almost guaranteed to land a job. Probably not. Uh, what do I do if I like coding, but I do not what do not what to make or write? Find a client. Find a client. 
find a non-profit, do something for free. Uh, I appreciate that. Pound the like button, appreciate that. Got my first technical interview. I think I did good. Hey, congrats, dude. Good job. Uh, I don't know, I don't know. How are we doing for time? Oh, 45 minutes. Hmm. Anjali Shah, my code broke a feature on production. Does this happen at least once for everyone? Well, it happens uh, to people all the time. I wouldn't worry about it. That's why you you uh, you use um, GitHub or other repos, and that's why you roll back when things happen. It happens all the time. Don't worry about it. No big deal. No big deal. Uh, question, which psychology books do you recommend? Ooh. Um, depends what you want to do. Check out my Lizard Wizard, which is uh, basically a psych course. Uh, this is going to help you with your, with your thinking about you, your psychology, trust me. Um, what's one I would recommend as the first one? A very interesting one is Influence by Robert Cialdini. That's one. Another one is Thinking Fast and Slow. Thinking Fast and Slow, which is um, Heinemann. So those are two books I recommend off the top of my head. My head, besides the negative and where do you find the best place to find project ideas that we will get the most from you can get you get a lot from any projects when you're first starting out so just get any projects as a beginner should i start with vs code or continue with sublime uh, vs code looks to me to be just a copy of sublime so go to vs code big deal doesn't matter What kind of things are you adding to the mentoring group? Um, well, right now, the mentoring group has all my courses, plus we have bi-weekly live uh, Zoom chats. And I have all kinds of people, all different levels on there, and they put all kinds of questions to me. And we record these. Uh, so that's cool. We're going to be expanding the private club. And uh, I'm going to be the first, like my, J my JS Pro course will be first released there. Um, and I have some other things I'm thinking about. Uh, I don't want to get into it now because I don't want to make promises I can't keep, but it's an organic uh, program where I keep adding to it, refining it based on the needs of the group. In fact, I created Lizard Wizard as an example specifically for the group because some people in the group needed some work with uh, communication skills. Oh, is 40K two level as a new Java job? Depends where you live in the world. I don't know where you live in the world. Um, but it's your first job. Get this considered, you know, getting paid to learn, right? You're, you're learning. You're learning. You're getting paid to learn. Mm. Excellent advice concerning retirement. Yeah, that's the key. Once you get into that, you start with your FU money, you learn to budget, then you start in saving and investing like a madman or a woman. Um, it will, that quickly gets you into a, a position where you're feeling very comfortable and you feel you're, you're basically extracted from the rat race because you've, you've removed yourself from the financial pressures and psycho, psycho, the psychological stresses of that. And if you live that way, Within a short period of time, without having to become a super successful person, just being smart, uh, you'll be in a good position. Mm. Love your teaching style. Thank you. I'm not a master nerd. Ah, I appreciate that. Uh, design for a lifetime. Maybe don't sweat sweat accumulation just so as to, to stop designing a creative life here. Uh, I'm not sure if I quite. I think I understand what you're saying. I'm just starting out in Python, the best language to learn. Python is just a nice, easy language to learn. But once you learn one language, uh, your second, your third, your fourth becomes super easy. So the hardest time is the first language. So don't give up. Because once you've gotten through that, then to learn JavaScript or Java or C Sharp or PHP or whatever, it just gets easier and easier. Um, Is there a way to get sponsorship for U.S. to work with U.S. companies as a Canadian? 
there is a T1 visa, but software dev isn't it. Isn't in it. I don't know. You'd have to talk to specialists in that area. Have you read Bitewise by David Orbach? Very interesting mix of coding and psychology. I think you'd enjoy it if you haven't already read it. I'll take a look. I haven't seen it yet. I think I heard of it. Uh, okay, what's going? How are we doing here? Oh, 50 minutes up. Yeah, yeah. How do you get your freelance gigs? Well, I'm not a freelancer anymore, but I talked about this. You can check it out. Set up a demo site. Go two to three small projects. Start talking to people, letting people know. Once you get into that mix, once you get a first, your first two or three clients, then it becomes much easier. Uh, not a problem. My pleasure. All right. How are we doing? I think I had a uh, super chat. Oh, here we go. Is it best to niche down to freelance and web dev? Hmm. Eventually, but you have to figure out what that niche is by your market. You may find in your part of the world, it's all WordPress dev. And in that situation, then you can learn to, uh, I'll just using WordPress as an example. Uh, let's say you find out it is WordPress oriented in your area. All your clients are very WordPress oriented. Then maybe you can concentrate on particular themes and plugins, set up a workflow accordingly. Or maybe it's a lot of people who are doing... Um, I don't know, Shopify or maybe, you, you know, raw websites, you know, it's hard to say. Uh, yeah, but eventually when I, when you say niche down, I think about workflows. That's how, well, one of the ways you increase your salary by double and triple as a freelancer is by developing refined workflows that maximize your time. So instead of it taking you 10 hours to complete a project with good workflows, you get it down to five or two hours, but you still charge, you know, seven, eight hours, you know. Uh, workflows are key. I am back. All right. Okay. So, how are we doing? 52. Hmm. Uh, what could be a career evolution of a developer, your suggestion? It could be all, all kinds of different areas. That's the thing. To me, being a developer, a coder, is it's a fundamental skill. It's like a superpower. Um, and it opens up all kinds of opportunities, whether you decide to become a coder long-term or not. That's up to you. Yeah. yeah what else? Is... What do you think of Code Academy Educative or Brilliant along with your programs? I would start with my programs because you find that you learn so much there. Uh, yeah, so, oh, by the way, when, when we, I just got a, a ding from the Discord channel. If you look below this video, there is a link to the Discord channel. I think we have 1,500 members. So I invite you to join. It's free. There's a nice group there. I just got a, a DM from somebody in the Discord. How are we doing? Yeah, some people are joining here. Yeah, yeah, yeah we've had, I don't know, eight, nine people join. I invite you to join. Uh, yeah. Learning Java in college at the moment and hate it. Yeah, Java's a little heavy. Java's a little heavy. Uh, where to start with zero experience? I know how to turn on a PC and that's about it. Blackbeard, I would start with the web stack because it's visual at first and it also offers a wide range of possibilities. Hmm. Hey, Cheeto, I just joined the Discord, got past the capture. There you go. Welcome to the, to the Discord. <laughs> I just, you just activated my Google by talking to yourself. <laughs> Sorry, guy. <laughs> How do you feel about web minimalism, anti-front-end framework bloat as a back-end native react feels absurd how do you talk web news anti front end framework bloat yeah that's i started seeing that years ago where people started loading up everything in the front end and they had this huge payload of code coming into front end you always want to try to find a balance there when you get experience you'll know when it makes sense to do an operation if you will on the front end 
or and when to do it on the back end. Um, yeah, that's you don't want to go crazy in one direction or the other. It depends on the circumstance. Depends on the circumstance. But yeah, I, I'm not a big. I've seen that where they front load and you're just waiting for that page to load. You know, when you design your front ends, no matter what you do, you want to load. You want to make sure there's some. There's the screen is painting. Something is being seen as quickly as possible. You don't want users to click and have to wait for that that page to render. So you better set up a, a strategy where uh, they see something quick, right? Uh, hi from Colorado. I will soon be looking for a job. I'm a decent at coding and and I'm weighing out whether I should focus solely on algorithms interviewing or work towards AWS certified developer. I would first thing do is check out the job opportunities in your area in Colorado, see what they're looking for, and then uh, bone up on the skills accordingly. So uh, congrats. No worries. You're welcome. Remember, coding is an error-prone process. That's why there's Windows 11 and 10, and iOS 14, whatever it's at now. And it's got 14.2.5. Point, all those subversions are all mistakes that are being fixed and architectural issues being improved upon. To a great extent, anyway. What could be the carrier evolution of a developer? Your suggestion, the carrier evolution of a developer. I don't know what you mean by carrier evolution. All right, how are we doing? Right, a few more minutes. Thanks for the likes, everybody. I appreciate it. I never used it, um, but I would check out my courses instead. But I'm biased. I hope you make money as a freelance web maker. I hope to make money as a freelance website maker. Yeah, why not? There's a lot of demand. Uh, do you recommend new coders to learn Python as a first programming language to build a website using HTML, CSS? They're not, they're not related. Two different things. Um, I would just do HTML, CSS, JavaScript. Get a feel for that because a lot of opportunity there is for, for freelance and so on and jobs and then maybe jump to Python. Or if you just want to do Python, just do Python. But they're, they're not directly related. Although when they do web apps, you can do web apps with Python, but you have to use extra libraries called uh, frameworks to help that out. Mm. Uh, I love your content. I know as many PaaS solutions charge a lot of money once you have to scale. Is it worth learning how to set up, manage your own server from scratch? I would say no, generally speaking. Uh, if you have to scale, that means you're making money and you can afford to scale. And uh, you can deal with that when that problem happens. But you have to choose whether you're going to be a developer or system administrator. I much prefer being a creator of systems, developer, because system administrators tend to get squeezed out over time. But developers won't. Hey, Steph, I know HTML, CSS, and learning JavaScript, but I am a graphic designer by nature. I know Photoshop, Illustrator, Automate. Do you think this will give me a leg up if you are looking for a job? Yeah, for sure. Because you be you have that designer's eye, and you understand layout and white space and alignment and fonts and so on. I've said many times that... Um, I've said many times that... Uh, the difference between successful websites and not so successful websites or apps is the UI UX more than anything else these days, besides the content itself. Is v is a VPN a good investment? I don't know. I don't use one, but uh, a lot of people think they're good. Mm, Python is useless pretty much. Well, no, it's used quite a bit, but you're right. It's used a lot in academics. It's used when you know bigger organizations when they want to want to automate process. Maybe we get into AI. There's a lot more opportunities for most people in the web stack. But if you learn Python and you can't find jobs for you to pivot into JavaScript, it would be pretty easy. How do I get to your Zoom sessions? I remember if you go to the private forums. Did you join the private forums? If you didn't, you should send me an email. And in the private forums, there are links posted to the private Zoom sessions. The next one is this Sunday, this Sunday. Um, 
Yeah, once again, just a quick reminder, link below to the Discord channel. Just, there's like, I don't know, uh, we have a lot of members in there. You should check that out. Hey, Steph, I, have, I haven't been to your live for a long while. How's your kitchen reno going? <laughs> You're old school. Yeah, the kitchen is done. Kitchen is done. It's uh, pretty much complete. Can I get you there? Hold up. We'll see if I can get you there. Yeah, I can't see it. The autofocus is set to face only. So there, there's the kitchen. <laughs> yeah, that took a lot of time. Oof. My kitchen rental took months and months. I'll show you. One day I'll show you some nice photos. I got some nice marble there. Brazilian marble. Uh, do you think with Python you can get hired knowing HTML CSS? Yeah, if you're good at it, if you're good at it. All right, how we doing here? Okay, one hour. All right, guys. I go. Uncle Steph needs to go. Uh, Webstack is that your course? Just take a link below to see my courses and my mentoring program, and you can decide. You can take a look around. If you have any questions, let me know. Mm. All right, it's been an hour, so I appreciate everybody joining. Um, Sorry, I didn't, get to, I didn't get to everybody's questions, but uh, the voice is getting a little rough. So thanks for joining the stream. Appreciate it. Cheers, everybody. Leave me a, leave me a uh, comment below. Uh, if you like the stream, give me a thumbs up as well. Uh, that'd be cool. That's pretty much it. That's pretty much it. So I'll leave you with my, my track. I have my channel track. This is something I created. Thank you.